A big question on all beekeepers' mind, whether you're a new beginner starting out in the spring or if you're a beekeeper that was fortunate enough to overwinter your colonies, big question on everybody's mind is, when do I start dealing with the mites in the spring? How's the best way to do that? Hey everybody, David Burns, thanks for joining me today. Good to be with you today. I'm gonna to talk to you today about when, why and how we treat for mites going into the spring. Now, a lot of you live in different areas. A lot of you are uh, already warmer. Some of you are still cold, but this is helpful information. Let's dive right into it. I'm gonna start first by talking about this pyramid that I came up with in a recent live stream to help you guys understand basically some of the ways that we deal with the Varroa destructor mite. Now, if you're new to beekeeping and maybe this uh, idea of dealing with mites is sort of new to you, uh, let me just uh, say that, wow, it's really important that we really do learn how to combat, control the Varroa destructor mite. They are probably the number one enemy of our bees right now. So we need to really learn how to deal with mites. Now in this chart, I've actually kind of sketched it out where we can see the different levels. Some people call this uh, integrated pest management. And you can see we start kind of on a, a broad playing field where we try to deal with mites in a preventative way. For example, one of the ways that we can prevent mites is by breaking their, the brood cycle of the honeybees. Mites only reproduce uh, within the cap cells of the developing pupae. So if we can uh, strategi strategically, critical times in the year, if we can actually control the developing pupae, reduce it like caging our queen, we can actually prevent a lot of mites from emerging or, or actually reproducing. And so this is one method. Another method is that we can actually select queens that are more resistant uh, to mites reproducing so much. There's a little bit of headway being made there. We, we still aren't at a place where you can buy a particular queen and never have to worry about mites again. So there's preventative ways that we keep mites from expanding. And then we kind of bump up to the physical way that we like to control mites. And I'll talk more about this, but just give you an idea what, I'm, what this uh, video is gonna be about. It's gonna be how we can use green drone comb to control mites. If you don't know what that means, stay tuned to, through this video. Also how screen bottom boards can be of a slight help, a slight advantage maybe even powdered sugar, how that can be a slight advantage as well. These are sort of physical ways, mechanical ways that we can implement uh, methods to control mites. Then we get into treatments. And I know that's what we have on board on the table here today is various treatments. By the way, Bobblehead David is here saying, please subscribe. Let's see if he can say it on his own. Go ahead, David, say it. Please subscribe. Well, that wasn't bad. <laughs> But um, anyway, he's standing on top of a lot of different kind of treatments that a lot of you may uh, wonder about how to use them if they're right. And we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. So we have things like uh, we have some Apigard. I don't know. I don't think I have uh, salic acid crystals here, but we've got a whole bunch of like formic, a bag of formic pro, Apistan, which is fluvalinate. And then we have Apivar and other things that beekeepers use to control mites with a treatment method. Well, anyway, if you think about that, we separate these into soft treatments. Some people call them organic, and then we go into more hard treatments. Now, most of us don't like using hard treatments. Most of us don't even like using soft treatments, but sometimes you have to if you can't control the mites. I'm gonna be talking about how we test for mites for those of you that are brand new and you're not sure how to even figure out how many mites that you have. Uh, there's two different methods or two, two different containers that are pretty popular right now. They're both similar. They actually, uh, you put your bees in there and then you either use powdered sugar or alcohol to dislodge the mites off of your bees, your sample bees, and then you look under here or underneath the bottom and you start counting mites. We'll talk all about that. So this is gonna be a good video. So stay tuned all the way through the end because we do have a lot of good information to help you guys out. Now let's start. I'm gonna talk about two types of beekeepers today. I'm gonna to talk about, um, talk with the new beekeeper. That is, you're starting with a package, you're starting with a nucleus this year. And so what is the first time, the first period, the first date that you should start dealing with your mites? And it's gonna be similar if you're starting with a brand new nucleus. So if you're foreign to beekeeping, don't know these words that I'm using, a package is about 10,000 bees in a box, a screen box, plastic cage or something. And inside there's a mated queen that is in her own cage. So that three pounds or 10,000 bees is what a lot of new beginners start with, with a mated queen. And then the nuke is 
short for nucleus, and that's usually five frames taken from the heart of a colony that's already existing. And the, so the queen is laying, there's various stages of brood, and by brood I mean eggs, larvae, pupae, and then there's um, some resources like honey and pollen, bee bread that's in those five frames. So that's the difference. So that's sort of, we'll talk about the new beekeeper first, and then I'll talk about those of you that have overwintered your bees, how your uh, timing and all works out for treating mites in case you're overwintering your bees. So let's jump right into the beekeepers that are just starting out with either a package or a nucleus. A very common question I get asked is, when should I treat my bees after I install my package? How soon should I treat for mites? Should I treat them immediately? And I'll tell you what, before we jump into that, let me just tell you, you need to learn this little way of uh, dealing with mites. Three simple words, okay? Test, treat, and test. So in other words, what we wanna do first is we wanna test for mites, and then based on the number of mites that we see, then we go ahead and we choose whether we need to treat or not. And if we do need to treat, we select our treatment. And then after we treat, we wait a few weeks and then we go back and test again to see if the treatment really was efficient. So some people say, well, David, you know, everybody has mites. Why can't I just go ahead and treat for mites? I don't wanna test them. I don't wanna kill bees because uh, if you use alcohol wash, you are gonna be killing 300 bees each time you test. So some people don't wanna do that. I'll just treat them, be done with it. And so the reason we test, treat, and test is because if you test first and see that you don't have hardly any mites at all or zero mites, why bother spending the money? You don't have a problem. And so that will save you money if you test first and determine that your, your threshold is not reached the point where you need to treat. And so that's important. Um, if you treat without testing, um, a few years ago, there was a product, I won't say which one because I don't remember, but it did not work well, something happened. So a lot of beekeepers uh, used a product to kill their mites, but the product failed. So you wouldn't have known that had you not first tested, used the product to control mites, and then tested a few weeks later to see, did it work? Are my mite, is my mite count low? And so these are reasons that you may really need to consider test based on the test results, treat or you don't have to treat, or if you do have to treat, you have to treat and then test a few weeks later. Okay, so for the new beekeeper, uh, let me explain a bit. Um, there's several different things going on here when you install your package. Namely, your package is probably gonna be uh, as clean as it will ever be. And what I mean by that, since there's no brood in there um, and the mites, any mites that are gonna be in your 10,000 bees are gonna be they're, they're external parasites, so they're gonna be on the outside of your bees. But mites develop in the, in the comb in this capped over pupae. So when your new package begins laying eggs, your queen, and they have brood, that's when those mites are gonna jump into uh, the cells just before they cap them over and reproduce, producing about 2.5 mites um, per each cell of the brood, plus the mite that went in there first, the mother mama mite. So you got 3.5 mites coming back out after 21 days. So it's important for us to consider how do we go about treating? I really do recommend that you don't treat right away. And the reason is because there's a lot going on with the package. A lot of you are getting packages and the weather can turn cold. And so the bees may be clustered. Your treatment may not be as effective depending on which of these you use. Also, if you treat kind of early on, and the bees aren't really settled down into their new home yet, they could abscond. They could just reject this idea of some sort of acid uh, vaporizing in their hive, whether you're using a salic acid or Formic Pro or something like that. Even the Apigard is, is still uh, uh, venting out. They're tracking it around and they may not like this, you know. So they may just all abscond. That means your bees may all leave because they're just opposed to this treatment. After they get established as a colony, and they have eggs, the queen's laying, um, it's a strong colony. The treatment has less effect on the bees leaving, har hardly none at all, but I'm just worried about you treating it too soon. So I recommend that you really wait at least 21 days after a package before you do uh, tests and treat for mites. Now, one of the reasons for that is, you know, you have 10,000 bees, and if you're gonna do an alcohol wash, you're gonna reduce them by 300. Those bees are dying of natural causes anyway. They're aging out because they were taken out of strong colonies. Those bees are, uh, many of those bees aren't as young as you might hope, and so they're, they're dying anyway. 
And so uh, we want to help the colony kind of get going. And so by killing bees uh, right off the bat, like for, as soon as you get them, you're reducing the 10,000 uh, and then you're going to see bees continue to die. And if your treatment does have uh, kind of takes a toll on some of the bees, if, if the acid is uh, strong enough to kill some of the bees or even the queen, that's not good either. So let's let that package or that nuke get established at least uh, two to three weeks before we start dealing with our mites. Now stay tuned if you're an experienced beekeeper just overwintering and you're gonna make uh, some splits coming up. I got really good tips for you guys on how to deal with mites coming out of winter. But let's go back to uh, the new beginner with packages. You're gonna use something like this. This, uh, both of these are the same, but they essentially have a basket uh, inside. Uh, this one is handy because uh, it does come with a little container to scoop up 300 let's say nurse bees. We want bees off the brood area. They're the ones tending to the open brood. Don't get the queen in here because you're killing these bees to do your tests. And then you place them in a basket and you uh, submerge them in rubbing alcohol. And then after you do that, you slosh them around and then you count how many mites have fallen off. So the threshold that we're using nowadays is that we're looking to be less than three mites, three, three mites or less, on 100 bees. And we sample 300 to make it average out good for us. And so by that, uh, we're trying to stay below nine mites on this test and out of this 300 bees. So that's our threshold. Now, let me just say, uh, let's say an average colony, once it gets going and, and uh, strong in the summer, it's going to be about 40,000 bees. Now, it won't be that big when you first start out. But once it reaches July, your bees are going to be about 40,000. Let's use that number. And let's say that we do have three mites per 100 bees, which is at the threshold of not having to treat unless it's more than three. I wanna still put a bug in your mind, in your thoughts, because um, three mites per 100 bees turns out at 40,000 bees to be 1,200 mites in the colony. 1,200 mites, that's, uh, that's a lot. So even though it doesn't sound like many, you say, oh, I've only got three mites per 100 bees, I'm below the threshold where I need to treat, you still gotta be aware that that equates to 1,200 mites in your colony. And if you do the math, roughly saying that 2.5 or three mites are emerging out of each egg that's laid, that means that in 21 days, these mites were reproduced to equal roughly the number of over 4,000 mites in, in 21 days when, when the brood does emerge. So that's alarming. See how fast it grows. It's, it's, it's insane. So what we can do is keep our mite levels down. Now, in this case, um, I was going to mention Formic Pro, uh, a bag of Formic Pro here. Formic Pro is an acid. It's formic acid. And it does kill mites below the caps, which is really important because uh, there's a lot, if not the majority of the mites sometimes we were dealing with, they are below the capped over pupae. So other things like a salic acid only kills mites that are on the backs or bottom underside of the bees. It doesn't affect the mites that are uh, reproducing in the cap cells. And so that's why there's a call to use it over and over again. And, uh, but if, if in the case when you're trying to determine what to use, it, it kind of matters because if you want a big flash kill, like if you did a, a, a sample and you had 40 mites out of these 300 bees, that's a lot. Many people would say your hive is doomed. Uh, but you would, you would not want to use something that is more slow acting, that takes longer. Like, you know, this uh, takes a lot longer, the Apigard. But you can use Formic Pro because within a week or so, it's going to flash kill the mites. So you're going to knock out, it's going to be a real strong punch where a salic acid, a salic acid is more of, of a control. You use it to uh, control the mites. So let's talk about when do you treat for mites? Well, it's funny when people ask me this, when do I do it? What day of the year do I do it? There's no answer. It depends so much. I know you I got a lot to share with you, so, so hear me out on this one, but it really does depend. So let's talk first about when to treat for mites. Well, first, it's going to depend on your numbers. How many mites do you see here? Are you over three per 100 bees? Then that's a good time for you to treat. The second consideration is temperature. Um, many of these products that we use to treat for mites are uh, temperature sensitive. They can't be used over a certain temperature or under a certain temperature. And so you've got to consider the temperature. And then you, third thing, can you treat with honey supers on or do you have to take the honey supers off? Some of you may not want to sacrifice your honey crop 
because the bees are bringing honey in. And so you've got to know that. Um, a lot of these treatments do call for things like uh, to be placed in within the brood area. So it has to be these, some of the strips have to be placed between brood frames, for example. And so you've got to know that you have enough brood to do that. Um, are you in a honey flow or not? So in other words, you really do have to become a good student of all of these op options. <laughs> I lost my voice. And so I think what I would do if I was you and you were really contemplating using uh, treatments to keep your mites under control, I really think you need to spend the time to do your own research. Buy these products, spend the money, and it, they all come with pamphlets that describe their use in great detail, and the label is the law. So whatever the recommendation is to use these various products, it has to be a law that, it's a federal law that has to be followed. And so in other words, you gotta be your own student. You have to really come up with your own plan. So don't just buy these because you maybe saw somebody on YouTube and they used one, or uh, somebody in your club said it worked great for them. All these scenarios may be different. So I wanna tell you that you need to come up with your own plan, your own practice, uh, because it's gonna be up to each of us as beekeepers to know how each of these are gonna work and what our situation is. Each situation is different. I see people and it's crazy. There are some people <laughs> that will watch a YouTube video and somebody will use one of these on a YouTube video and say, oh, I had a lot of mites. You know, I had a bunch of mites here, so I put this on it. I went back and they're all gone now, I did great. And so everybody just goes crazy. You run out of the house. When you watch that video, you got pillow hair, you got one shoe off, you barely got your britches on, you hit the car, you drive to the bee shop, you gotta buy that because somebody said it worked great for them. That's not the way to approach this. Look, you don't know what that beekeeper, you don't know their history, you don't know what, uh, what had they treated before, you don't know what their temperature, where they're located, what time of the year the video was produced and all, there's so many variances. That's why it's better for each of us as a beekeeper to know all about these different treatments. The only way you're gonna know it is if you buy them, study it and read it carefully. Now, before you buy them, I do believe that all of these have very good websites, the Apigard, the Formic Pro, Salic Acid. You're gonna be able to read all that documentation of how to use it before you even purchase it, but you've got to invest the time into really studying this and understanding it. Now, let's talk about the experienced beekeeper. Now, those of you that are brand new to beekeeping, starting with a package or a new, follow me because a lot of this information is good for you too. But I'm gonna talk now, uh, for those of you coming out of winter, congratulations, your hive survived, but rest assured they're full of mites because your bees did raise some more brood in the latter part of winter. So the same applies, you need to test, treat, and test, and the difference is that your hive is large, largely populated. So hopefully they are. So instead of having 10,000 bees in a package, you are close to having 20 to 30 to 40,000 now. And so you need to test as soon as possible. In other words, the package B, the nuke being installed, I recommend waiting a few weeks, let the colony get established so they don't abscond and they have a chance to grow a little bit. But for those of you coming out of winter, as soon as it warms up enough, where you can go in there and lift some frames out. That's usually 65 degrees Fahrenheit, about 18 degrees Celsius. And so you can go in there and start lifting up frames. And even once you spot your queen, isolate her somewhere and use this cup to get 300 bees off the brood area and then do a sample as soon as you can. That way you're coming out of winter knowing what you're dealing with. Now, how soon should you treat this over winter colony? Um, now, this is tough because your overall objective for most of us is swarm control. Because as soon as it warms up and our, we have a lot of drones uh, that, are uh, that are emerging uh, from their cells, uh, male bees ready to reproduce with virgin queens, then we know swarm is imminent. And so what we're doing is we're trying to determine, um, well, how do we control swarming? And what's our main objective in doing that is usually making splits. So while our bees are still together, before we make a split, it's gonna be more cost-effective and probably more effective if we treat before we make a split. In other words, if we're gonna put Formic Pro in a hive to kill mites, it's cheaper to put two of the pads in one hive than to put two of the pads in two hives. See what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, um, and it just cuts down on mite population and growth. However, there, are, there is something to be said about making a split to control mites. And that's one of the things that I do. 
I've on, on the hives that are coming through winter here that are really strong, I'm going to split them four times. They're strong enough to split four times. In other words, my first time to make a split, I will split them. I'll make two splits out of that. And so I'll make one split that takes the mother queen with them. And so that'd be a couple of frames of brood and resources. And then the next split that I make won't have a queen, but they'll have eggs. So that's two splits right there that I'll be making. Then I'll wait about 30 days because everybody has raised their queen and those queens are laying. So back to the big colony again that I made two splits from, I will split them again twice. Again, taking the mother hive out, a mother queen out, and letting the main hive raise a new one. And the other split that I make, they'll raise their own new queen. So what I'm doing in, in many of those cases, I'm letting there be a brood break because when they have to raise a queen, it's going to take 30 days without brood, the mites can't reproduce as much. So that's one of my controls. But the ones that had queens and had brood, I do have to monitor mite loads in those. So you can make splits and really start reducing how much effort you got to put into controlling mites with that brood break. That's really important to do that. Now, the important thing I want to share with you guys is that you really have to keep your mite levels low all year long. This really isn't a kill your mites once, and it's done for the whole year. It's Mites will continue to reproduce even if they're at low numbers and get right back to high numbers within 30 to 60 days in your hive. So we're constantly battling these mites, and I recommend that you monitor your mites every 30 days. Go in there, take a sample, whether it's powdered sugar or alcohol wash. I've made videos on which, which one is better, and I do believe the alcohol wash is more accurate, but if you're against killing bees uh, to do a test, I, I have compared the two and a video here on YouTube. I'll try to leave a link in the description. But try to do this every 30 days because new bees are emerging every 21 days as workers. So you're getting a whole bunch of mites emerging as well. So practice mite sampling once a month in your new hive. Now, again, become a student of treatments. Um, don't take other people's opinions for it. Really spend the time to study uh, things like you know, the big hitters that a lot of us are, are hearing people use and that we use are Form Formic Pro, uh, Apigard is a big one. Um, Hopguard 2 is something that uh, some people enjoy. The green drone comb is a mechanical way uh, of, of controlling mites by trapping, drone trapping mites. That's a really good way. A lot of people use the solic acid. But spend time really doing your research, doing your homework. Don't fall into just letting other people tell you to do it their way because their way may be a different way. Um, now, one of the ways that I effectively control mites is I really enjoy breaking the queen's brood cycle, except uh, when I'm splitting and I'm wanting my splits to grow rapidly, I can't really break the queen's brood cycle. So it's a little harder for me to break the brood cycle in the spring when my colonies are building up, but that's something I do practice in August, September, and October. Those three months are when mites really multiply quickly in a hive, and that's when I start breaking the queen's brood cycle with a queen pushing cage. I've made so many videos about that. Isolate the queen for five days. That's going to cut down on how many mites can reproduce when they're reproducing rapidly at that time of the year. Now, each treatment, um, I want you to learn this about each of these treatments. Don't take other people's word for it. I'm helping you to become a citizen scientist. Listen, we're stepping up. We're leveling up beekeeping here. Instead of always taking other people's uh, ideas and other people's approaches and letting other people tell you how to do it, it's time for us to become citizen scientists. Here's the thing. So you can buy these ingredients or, again, go to the websites of all these products that I've, I'll list here for you that are the common ones that people use. And I want you to know what is the active ingredient? What is the way that you apply it to your colony? Where do they want you to put the pads or the containers or whatever it is? How do you administer the treatment? Study that, memorize it, you know it well. What is the protection that you should wear? Some of these require, uh, you know, nitrile gloves. They require uh, goggles or long sleeves or even respirators. Um, you need to know what you need to wear to be safe. And the other thing is you need to understand timing. What is the timing of your treatments? When should you treat? It's not always about just doing it systematically, but about studying your bees and knowing the best time that you should treat. Like for example, um, oxalic acid is really best when minimal brood is on there. Since it doesn't kill below the caps, uh, less brood, you'll get better kills on that. 
And you also need to study each of these to determine how to remove the product and what you do with it once you remove it. What's the proper way to throw it away? Also, all of these talk about the efficacy. That's just a big fancy word for how effective it is. And so look to see the efficacy of each of these products. How effective are they at killing mites? And then you need to study about their effect on the bees, the queen, and the brood. Some people have uh, kind of said that they don't like how Formic Pro killed their queens or killed the brood or something. Other people say it doesn't do that. And I think that's real dependent upon a lot of stuff going on, like ventilation, the time of the year, how hot it is and all that. So you need to think about what kind of negative effect do these treatments have on your bees, what's been uh, actually being said and being done there. Now, this is uh, really a good uh, kind of like a, a primer, I guess, to get you guys thinking about controlling mites, letting you know there are a lot of ways that we can control mites. Like I said, push in queen cage, screen bottom boards help. I haven't talked about powdered sugar dustings, but they do have a little bit of effectiveness. Like in other words, you can open your hive up and take a cup full of powdered sugar and let it fall between your frames onto the bees. And when bees get dusted with this powdered sugar, then it helps the mites kind of lose their grip, but it can't be your only thing. It's just part of a method. And also, if you fall in love with one of these treatments, I think it, everybody knows that it's good not to just use one over and over and over and over again for obvious reasons. You know, we don't want our mites to kind of get resistant to these things, but we can rotate different treatments that can actually be more effective for us as well. Now, these things are important to know, and I know I haven't given you every little step of the way, hold your hand, tell you the dates, but I've given you enough information that I hope you can grasp all this treatment concept, wrap your head around it a little bit better, and then step out and level up and say, this year, I'm gonna really learn how all of these are used and study them carefully and find the most effective one that can help me keep my mite levels low. Especially those of you that lost your bees this winter, likely that it was a viral destructor mite. And so by keeping these levels low, you're gonna have better winter survival in, the, in hitting the fall with your mite levels low. That's so important. Let me just jump in here and say, I'm excited about B-Team 6. It's a mentorship program that I created uh, well over eight years ago. Been mentoring beekeepers around the world over the last uh, almost a decade now. And we've opened it back up. We've had it restricted now and taking no new members. But now we're taking new members on B Team 6 where I mentor you. And you really need to learn, learn how uh, important it is to have a mentor. And so if I can be of assistance to you, you know my personality. You can watch me here and kind of know the, the teaching style that I have. And if that's a match, it's not for everybody. I'm not for everybody. But if I am someone that can help you beekeep uh, better, then consider becoming a member of B Team 6. I'll leave a link right here. And that is something you can choose to let me coach you through beekeeping. A lot of beekeepers are facing some dilemmas and questions for the month of March. And if that's you, I made a video just for you right here. Let's answer some March questions. I'll see you over there.